Today I'm checking out Atlas by Algonaut, which is a sample management plugin slash standalone, I think, which uses AI to match samples together and help find things that work well. Uh, the idea is to speed up your production process by suggesting things and allowing you to quickly find good samples for your loops. So that's what they say anyway. Well, that's what Matt says, who's the dev, a very cool guy who's kindly sent me the pre-release of 2.0. Oh, so I'll be exploring a lot of new features today, even though I don't really know what they are, because this is the first time I've ever used this or any sample management software ever. So if you're looking for a tutorial video, this is not it. This is a first impressions unboxing style video. <clears throat> now, the only thing that I've done here before I started was I installed the software and I created a map. So as I understand, maps take a while to generate. So I went ahead and created a map, which is a collection of sounds or samples. And I've added my splice sounds folder here. And that took some minutes to generate the actual map, which is what we see when we close this down. This is the map area. Oh, I need to select my map. So this is the factory default. Let's pick the one that I generated. And these are all my samples, I believe, these circles. So let's do some clicking. Okay, if I zoom in, yep, you'll see we get a lot more detail. And I can click anywhere and drag around. So let's go down to our kicks here. Let's see how far we can zoom in. There we go. And... So it's kind of found samples that are similar to each other. So those are quite muffled kicks, that's all good. Uh, let's zoom out, I'm using the scroll wheel, perfect. Um, can I click and drag on a sample? Nope, um, alt and drag, so alt drag will let me drag around the map, no matter where I click, which is handy. Let's go to our snares, where's our snares at? It's quite fast moving around, which is cool. All right. They all sound pretty similar, these clusters, so that's cool. Very good. <clears throat> so that is the map area. Let's have a look what else we got here. These are my others. I've got heaps of toned samples and weird stuff and vocals. So it's going to be a lot of fun dragging them into the sequencer and seeing what we can come up with. Okay, so looking at this map area here, we have some icons up the top right here. So these first two, we've got Earth and Galaxy. Okay, so this is a toggle. So Galaxy seems to go into a more off-the-grid style pattern. I'm assuming that the closer these dots are, uh, the closer the proximity, the closer the matches. Okay, let's try something a bit different. Let's not go to the crazy other folder. Let's have a look at this weird New Zealand shaped kick area over here. So he's here with these ones will have reverbs on them, so that's kind of cool that it's picked that up. Actually, these all seem to have reverbs on them. So all of these kicks up in this quadrant seem to have reverb. So that's neat. I'm not too sure what wizardry they've got to do that. Let's look at this little cluster here. This is like the, uh, this looks like some more, more reverberated stuff. What if we go over the other side? Let's check some of these out. I oh, say so these are real, real snappy kicks. You hear they will have quite a bit of high frequency at the start, a bit of a kind of a click. Awesome, okay, I'm pretty pretty impressed with this. I quite like this galaxy view with the proximity thing, but I think the Earth view is ultimately gonna be the least, um, I'm not gonna say least annoying, that's too negative, the, the more comfortable thing to use. So let's go back into Earth mode, very good. I noticed that when I'm in Earth mode, We've got four samples here in galaxy mode, and in Earth mode, we've only got three. So I'm not sure where that extra sample just appears to, but anyway, let's move on. Um, let's go back to Earth mode. Let's see what else we've got. So uh, we've got tooltips down the bottom, which is good. Trigger map samples when the mouse hovers over them. Okay, so let's turn that on. <laughs> Okay, that is too much fun. <laughs> That's really, really handy, actually. And the amount, that, how fast it is, is actually blowing my mind. Uh, it is on an SSD, these samples, but it's so quick. 
So that's going to be super handy. I'm used to using the um, Ableton Live browser where there's usually a bit of a slight bit of delay and I'm just pushing the down arrow again and again and again to find a sample. But this way I can just... I also really like how they light up white when they've been triggered and then they fade away over, oh, it looks like kind of five to ten seconds. So they're kind of, it's kind of handy because if you do it, you can kind of see where you've been and be like, oh no, it was over here. So that's, um, it's a really small thing, but when you're working with a kind of a, a grid style matrix kind of thing like this, um, I can see that being a huge help. Very good. Okay, let's turn that off. And what else do we have? Show favorite samples. Okay, so I'm assuming if I click on one of these, you'll see, yeah, we've got a favorite icon over here, the star. So let's favorite that favorite that and favorite that and now let's go show favorites and there they are so that's just kind of a simple like dislike thing I'm wondering if um favoriting samples will actually change the algorithm and what it kind of does when we create kits and stuff but we'll get to that shortly um okay so this is reset favorite samples on the map so this will go do you want to reset all the samples all the favorites yes I do Okay, and that looks like everything in the map. I, it's good, it's nice and simple and clean. You don't want too much when you're um, kind of exploring with your samples. So, yeah, very impressed with that. Now, I'm going to move down to the bottom here. I can see these the very familiar 4x4 four four pad layout style thing. And as I hover over them, I can see that we've actually got kind of meta labels on them. So, kick, snare, clap. Other, toms, shaker, hi-hat, cowbell, bongo, tambourine, clave, other, other, ride, crash. Okay, so this is kind of a, a standard drum kit layout. So I really want to click this new kit button. I really, really want to click it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. And we have some color and life. So I believe it's just randomly generated a kit for us. And um, again, based on everything I've read and heard about this, it's match samples that work well together. We're going to need to listen to these somehow. So before I start exploring what happens in these pads, and I see we've got a bunch of options up here as well, let's um, go over to the sequencer area, or, okay, so it's a pop-up from the bottom type thing, and you can see here's all of our samples going up from the bottom to the top, and it's kind of nice how they light up over here. So if I hover over one of these, it shows us what row it's in, so that's cool. And I guess we just put in a drum beat. Uh, does it work if I just hit play in Ableton live? Yes, it does. Let's um, let's go because I'm going to be showing off samples. Let's do a fast thing. Uh, we can change the length. So this is a length in beats. So this is four beats. Okay. So let's put a snare in here and here. Put in some closed hats. Okay. Okay, let's go new kit. I'm going to do this a few times because I can see this being a lot of fun. <laughs> cool. So that Tom's a bit, little bit off, but that's all good. Okay, if the Tom's a little bit off, let's go ahead and swap this out. So I'm going to stop the sequence playing in Ableton Live. <clears throat> uh, how do we hide the sequencer? I guess we just click it again. There we go. So it's playing. It's cool that when I click on this pad, it's showing me in the map. What happens if I'm not currently viewing that? Okay, so <clears throat> is there a way to jump to where the sample is? Okay, I right clicked it, so I'm assuming that's mute based on the color thing, but we'll check that out soon. Uh, this eye icon, excellent, okay. So by clicking on a sample and clicking on the eye, we're gonna jump to wherever that sample is in the map. <clears throat> okay, so let's say I wanna swap this Tom out. Let's click on the eye and, oh, we've gotta find new drum, let's just do that. 
zoom in a bit. So I can see as I click this, it's kind of choosing samples within the proximity of the other ones. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's see what happens if I just keep clicking this and see if it wanders off. It's really hanging around that cluster. I don't think it's going to break out. It's like the game of life. Okay, let's roll with that one. Let's go back to our sequence and have a listen to how it's going. Let's swap the snare out while the sequence is playing. Cool, where's the others? Let's put some others in. Let's swap some of these others around. Trying to see if I can get it to pick a bass sound. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> awesome. What's this one? Okay, let's make this 8 bars and get a... Well, I can do 16 beats. And that's awesome. So I've just noticed that when I went, moved to 16 beats, it's duplicated the 4 beats that I did. So let's get a bit of a cool pattern going on here. Put a crash here. The crash didn't seem to do much. Where's the crash? Okay, let's swap that out. Okay, so this is quite quiet, so I'm going to bring the gain up here. I'm wondering if this is applied to the pad or if it's applied to the sample. So if I swap this out, we get a new gain. Okay. Let's put some rides in on the beats. We can't really hear the rides at the moment. And let's try that mute thing. Well, let's have a look at these other things that we've got here while we're at it. Okay, so the obvious ones are pan, so that's to the left, that's to the right, all right. Does double click reset, it sure does. <clears throat> shape, I don't know what shape does. Can I mute everything at once apart from the right? I'm gonna try my modify keys. Yep, just like that. So holding down control and right clicking um, will make this ride soloed. Um, and I swear I have not done this before. This is all very intuitive. It's very well designed. So let's have a look at what the shape does here. In fact, I'm going to use... Now let's stick with the ride. So I'm going to bring the shape down. Okay, so that's shortening the release. So this is an, uh, an envelope. Okay, so going to the right, we give it some attack up to 200 milliseconds. And if we bring it down, it starts introducing a release and that goes down to 50 milliseconds. I notice that we have this dial changes depending on which direction we go. So this is the curve. So we can change the curve out like this. I'm gonna swap the sample out and try again with something else. So let's make the decay really short. Awesome, so we've turned a ride into a short hat. Very cool. So I keep playing the tail of this one, which is all good. I'm going to swap this kick out, get something a bit snappier. Okay, let's um, shape this kick to get rid of the kind of rumble at the back a bit. 
Awesome. Let's put this other back in. And I'll solo these. And the hats. What happens if I change the shape of something like a long sample? That's cool. It's almost given it kind of a side chain type thing. Okay, let's let's swap this out. Very good. Uh, we have a filter. Let's see. I'm going to guess bringing it to the left is a low pass. Yep, and bringing it up is a high pass. Cool. Let's give it some res. Quite a nice filter as well. So if we can get something a bit more raw. I don't think we can modulate these, unfortunately. We might be able to. We'll see how we go. Nice filter. Very good. And we have pitch. Okay. That one was good. Can I undo? Okay. Will it undo the sample? Yes. Good. Now let's bring the pitch down. Okay, we can only go down to negative 12. We've got a sense as well. So we can't go down ridiculous amounts, but that's all good. Okay. <laughs> ah, I love it. Yeah, I'm going to be using this a lot in my production for sure. Cowbell. Why not? I don't think I have too many cowbell samples, to be honest. Bring the shape down. And this is the shaker. I don't know if I can do any kind of side chaining or velocity style stuff. Let's have a look around here. Oh, there's an advanced section. Interesting. Okay, so let's solo everything but the shaker. So this is just 16th note shaker. Um, let's go back to the sequencer. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we can change the step size, so we could go up to 30 second notes if we wanted to. If we wanted to get really fast. Um, and they've managed to squeeze everything in here which is cool, so you can actually get really fast little notes here, which is cool. Mirror edit, mirror every beat. I don't know what this does, let's click it. Do I have to add something in? Ah, yep. Excellent. So, ah, that's awesome. You can see how as I hover it shows where it's going to place all the beats. So let's go bongo, which is... where are we here? Let's go here. How do I... Oh, I've got to turn this off. I've got to get used to the muting system. So if I put in a bongo here, it's going to... Cool. Uh, let's go 16th notes. It also removes the notes. It also mirrors the removal of notes, which is cool. So say if I want to get rid of these. And let's go mirror 2. So then you can start doing some interesting patterns with these. Mirror 4. 
Bounce off the set. Oh, I like that. Let's go back. Is that in key with this? Nope. And it's not supposed to be a baseline design tool, but <laughs> that's what we're getting at. Okay, let's go back to this now. I want to check out... No, let's stick with the sequencer, Tom. Okay, so we have shuffle. So let's turn on the shaker again, which is here. Let's turn on the shuffle. Awesome. So shuffle's pretty straightforward. We go all the way up to 100%. Let's bring the BPM right down. Let's get back up though, I'm enjoying the, the faster tempo. Let's turn the shuffle down. Okay, rotate all. Let's see what that does. I'm assuming it moves it across one step. Yep. So that's um, pretty straightforward. Very cool. And we already explored the length. Um, we have new sequence. So this generates a new sequence and modifies an existing one. We can clear the whole sequence, which I don't want to do. And I imagine this is where we save stuff. Okay, so let's figure out the, the saving. So let's say I'm quite happy with this loop here. Uh, I'm going to click on the save icon, I assume. Okay, we get a new pop out. So it says save loop. Okay, we'll call this, um, we'll just call this new loop one. I haven't set up my folder correctly here, so it's saving into the splice sounds, but that's okay. Let's go OK. And I assume that has saved. So if I go into my new, new user folder, there it is. OK. So if I was to go new sequence or trash it, and can I just double, oh, double click this? Boom, just like that. And we can go new kit. Let's open up everything here. Awesome. So if I was to go new loop, I'm assuming this is the new this is the drum kit that I saved. And we're back, and it even saves the muting. Okay, so let's close the browser down. Um, let's stop this playing for a sec, just so it doesn't drill into our brains. I don't think there's anything else here that I have missed. Uh, what does this little light do here? Oh, we can click on it to extend it out. Oh, is this velocity? Go on, be velocity. Oh, it's velocity, I think. <laughs> Matt, you clever bastard. All right, let's turn it on. Let's mute the shaker. And it mirrors the velocity too. So let's go mirror one. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, let's just make sure that we've got, um, 16th notes, and let's open this up, and bring those down, then of course we can turn mirroring off, and we can do a few little fancy humanization things, that's awesome, that, that's such a little hidden bonus, I was not expecting that at all, so, that's cool, and we can also solo and mute from here, which is cool. So this kind of works as a little bit of a mixer as well, so... Uh, we have... Okay, so I also noticed that... When I click on the actual thing, we get some more options here. So I've got nudge... Nudge the channel notes forward and backward in time. Okay, so I guess if you've just got a sample which is out of tune, or you want to get a bit of slop... Um, actually, let's try that. So let's unmute this. Let's get the snare and the clap going. I want to mirror these. 
uh, two. Here we go. And let's just listen to... So let's try and... F let's see if I can find a kind of a pre-shifted clap. Very good. Now if I go into my clap here, extend it down and let's nudge it. So now we've got some, some sloppy shit. Is this on a per note basis? No, it's not. That's cool. That's cool. What else we've got? Cut notes. Hmm. I'm assuming cut, copy and paste. So do I select it? How do I do this? So can I take the shakers, copy them and then paste them to the clave? I can. And then let's turn that on. And back up to fast speeds. Okay, I'm super impressed with that. That is a very compact yet versatile and intuitive sequencer. Okay, let's stop this. So I believe that's everything in the sequencer now. Is there anything else I can click on? I'm so glad I did that last little click and discovered that whole new area. Yeah, I don't see anything immediately apparent. Okay, I want to check out what this advanced thing does, but first let's just do this systematically. I noticed that we have a drag icon. We already covered the favorite. We have lock, but um, lock these control settings when pressing new kit. Okay, so that's cool. So when I, um, well, let's try that. Let's see if lock works on a per pad basis first. Oh, there's the lock there. Okay, I noticed that lock is different to that, so... Let's enable everything here. Okay, let's say I want to keep the snare. I'm assuming I click lock, or keep the kick and the snare, and the clap and the hat. And if I go new kit, I'm assuming that all the other samples will adjust. Yep. <laughs> that hay sound. There it is, let's swap that one out. Okay, that's cool. So what was I looking at here? Okay, I want to check out this lock thing. So let's solo this. And if I go, say, filter down with some res and bring the shape down. If I click lock and swap this out, so it retains the um, parameter values when I click new. So that's awesome. So we have two options before I was like, okay, well, I guess we have one that's better than none. And now we have the option to reset them or not. Okay, so we have the drag. Um, I'm assuming that's for dragging it into Ableton Live. So let's see if I can just drag that. And there we have our sample. <laughs> Sorry for the volume there. Um, excellent. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Can I drag it directly from... Yeah, I can drag it directly from the drum pad as well. Um, I'm going to get into that 
Surely, actually, I want to see if I can multiple drag. So let's load up a drum rack in this channel in Ableton Live. Uh, shift click, we'll select them all. Awesome. And let's drag them into this drum rack. And would you look at that? It drags every sample in for me. Like so. Okay, that's too cool. Anyway, back here. What have we done? There we go. Undo. Undo saves the day. Okay, I want to check out this um this advanced thing. So let's solo this. Let's just find a sample. Let's try that. And let's open this up. Okay, so this pops down from the top. So I can see the actual sample here. We've got time and amplitude. So we have fixed velocity. Ignore incoming MIDI velocity. All right, so that'll just, let's, let's test that out. So if I change the velocity of some of these, let's change the, um, the length of this just to four beats. Okay, so fixed velocity will play just the max velocity it seems like, rather than um, using the actual velocity. We have one shot and gate. Okay, so when it's on gate, when the MIDI note is turned off, it'll cut the sample short and not play a tail. So that's kind of handy. And then we've got a release value here, so we can make that quite short. So it kind of works like the shape would, except um, this is basically a note off trigger with a release value. Variation. So velocity. So can we vary the velocity? So let's go fix velocity and bring the variation up. So that's giving a random velocity to our samples here. So if I was to pick something like the shaker, and let's go fix velocity on the shaker, and gave that a random <coughs> variation here. So now we've got a kind of a human sounding thing going on. Let's go back here. <coughs> so let's turn that off. <coughs> Excuse me. So pitch. Okay, so these are, these are all randomizing various things within the sequencer. I haven't figured out how to solo multiple tracks yet, so I'm just going to... So the pitch seems to go <clears throat> maybe two semitones, I think. So when would this be handy? This would be handy with um, with percussion, I think. So if I was to choose this clap and bring the pitch up, maybe even on something like the hats, you can hear just a very slight variation. So this is this is all kind of again humanization things, things that kind of make it sound like it's not just played by a computer all the time. Anyway, let's go back here. So time. Delay the sample start by a random amount. Okay, so again, this could probably work well with something like clap. Uh, so we need to turn the nudge off for this. And let's bring the clap time up. Not too much. So you can hear how this is delaying the clap compared to the snare. So this is just um, giving it a bit of delay. So again, good for adding slop if you're into kind of um, hip hop, lo-fi hip hop, uh, any kind of stuff that requires a good sloppy shuffle, then that's uh, that's cool. Let's go back here again. Filter is currently grayed out, so if I turn this down, you'll see that, oh, this enables, so that's cool. Let's bring this right down. I'm on the wrong sample. Let's bring the filter up. Let's give it some res. So cool. Let's swap this out. <clears throat> Bring the 
just hand up as well. Okay, let's lock those prams and swap the samples out. Trying to find something basic. Okay, so I think we've um, we've covered these variation things. Over here we have so. Okay, we've got a fade, we've got a sample start, excellent. So let's start this where shit is actually happening. Let's bring the filter amount down a bit, the variation. Let's mute this one. See how the pitch thing is adding a really cool kind of uh, up and down a semitone? And the sample had a bit of an attack on it already, so it wasn't very good for this particular sound, which it isn't really a bass, but it needs to be more stabby, so I just moved the sample start time across. We have a fade in, which we can do over the entire sample. That's sick. And then I assume we have sample end, and this here. We can zoom in and out here, which is cool. Uh, we can flip the phase. So that's more of a utility thing. I can't think of how I can show you using that effectively right now. And then we have reverse. So let's go back to this sample here and let's reverse it, which isn't going to give us much at the moment. Um, let's find a new sample. Oh, that was a good one. Let's try that one and reverse it. Cool. Excellent. And next we have Choke Grip. I don't know what this does. Choke Grip. Drums in the same choke or choke group will stop each other when triggered. Okay, so it's, so it's kind of like a side chain but with a hard stop I'm guessing. So let's put one, this on Choke Grip 1. And put this on choke group one, two. Super cool. Ah, uh, let's unlock this stuff. So if these aren't in a choke group, see the tail will play out, but this will um, just kind of stop it from playing. So if I was to put a whole bunch of these in here, it will kind of duck this one out of the way, it will, it will actually stop it, it will choke it. I like that one. I'm gonna unlock these and let's lock all these and let's go new kit. Actually, let's bring it down. 
And let's get him more of a full four in here. Bring the pitch up. Let's, let's Tom here. Uh, what happens if I extend this out now? Very good. So this Tom, let's go back to our map. I haven't played with the map in a while. Whoops, don't click that. Uh, close this, close this. So here's our Tom. And I don't want a Tom. Let's go into our others. Look at it all twinkling away. Stars in the galaxy. I'm assuming if I right click it's well yeah, right click the hot hot swap. They're all quite harsh. find harmonic happiness with those. When I change the pitch, it also changes the speed. Maybe not the sound. sound in there. Let's use this one. Let's open up the sequencer again. So that's this one. Uh, we'll mirror this. stop this let's go back to our map and see if I can find low sounds in my other I'm, I'm kind of really not using this for drums at the moment I'm really enjoying using it to sequence samples I mean the, the amount of ideas that I've had from just this session talking to you guys is, is unreal <laughs> let's zoom out and see if we can get find something bassy there isn't a bass category is there no just other that's cool what oh we use this feature Let's zoom in here. Perfect. This is so much fun. That could work. So I'm going to drag that into. Which one was it? I don't remember. This one. 
change the sneer. me going over the samples by accident. Okay, what else do we have here? I think we probably should start wrapping this up. That's everything that I've seen immediately available. Um, let's have a look at some icons that I might have missed. So it's closed sequencer. Let's turn the sequencer off. So maybe if you're using an external finger pad or something and you want to just quickly toggle that off and on. I see that it still retains what the host is currently doing, which is cool. What does this do? Oh yeah, that's host sync. Okay, so I can turn that off, so now that's separate to the host in Ableton Live. Yep, all good. Um, export, uh, this will, I'm not going to cover this stuff in this video, but this, the export save, the save stuff is all straightforward, it saves loops, it saves uh, the kits, uh, loops, kits, sequences, and a loop spliced, which I'm not too familiar with, but we'll, yeah, well, I might leave that for another Why? time. Um, so we covered everything here, I like the shuffle, bring it up a bit. I just love this new kid button, I can't get enough, there's an, a thing here, oh, what does this do, okay, so native, okay so this has changed it around a bit, so you see how the meta kind of descriptions have changed to different different things so what else do we have finger drummer crash so i'm assuming this is a layout which is uh i, I don't finger drum myself but maybe this is a, a layout which is a lot better for a finger drummer so if you have um something plugged in that you want to finger drum with oh look at this we can change this to a 1x8, 2x8, 4x4, which we're used to, and 8x8. What happens to the sequencer? So the sequencer seems to be only showing the first, the first, um, the first 8. Can I alt drag? So if, the, if I make this 4x4, four four, so the sequencer just seems to be showing the first 8. Is there something in the settings here? Drum kit, default, default MIDI root note, cool. Yeah, I'm not too sure how the sequencer would handle a uh, having 64 individual hits here. Maybe there is something that I'm missing. Anyway, what else can we do? Launchpad Ableton. Okay, so this is uh, assuming that this is the launchpad for Ableton. And launchpad generic. Interesting, let's go back to the 4x4. Set root note MIDI for the drum kit. Okay, so that's cool. And oh, I haven't checked out this um, external out thing, so I'm assuming we can send this to individual channels in Ableton Live. Let me just find a new kit here. Let's go back to the save that I had. I don't want to save, I want to load this and this. Machine. It's 
bring this back up. Back to the original loop, which is really cool. So let's try let's let's try this um this multiple out thing. So we've got 16 channels. I won't do 16. Let's do three. So I'm going to close this down, and let's just have one, two, and three. So we'll go audio from Atlas uh, channel. Okay, well that's just channel one. Atlas channel. Well, we'll just do this properly. Channel two, channel three, and Atlas channel four and we'll need to turn the monitor of these to in go back to atlas and let's just pick the kick the snare and the bass sound so we'll go to channel two for the snare we'll go channel three and for this we'll go channel four let's have a look and look at that now we have individual samples coming through individual channels in ableton live so you know we could go ahead and just do some crazy shit, shit here. Uh, uh, we could kind of group the kick and the snare together, put a, um, a drum bus on them. and so on and so on we've covered all that this will show the sample in the explorer we've got our solo and mute here <laughs> yeah I think that's pretty much everything I can't see anything else that we've covered now just I think yesterday or today there's a whole new website on the Algonaut um, or the, a new Algonaut website, and I'm not too sure what's going on, but I know there's going to be a massive interaction with the website. I'm assuming it's going to be to do with packs that are available that you can actually download um, and actually do stuff with. Uh, but again, I won't cover that in this. Oh, let's see. Packs available. I don't know if the pre-release is actually going to show any of these. No, I don't think it is. Um, but anyway, yeah, so go check it out. I'm really happy with that. Algonaut Atlas version 2.0. I may have missed a few things. My apologies if I have to both the viewer and Matt. <laughs> but that was a lot of fun, super intuitive, and I will be using this in my productions from this point onwards. Have a great day. My name's Tom Cosm.